Okay, so parallel flow over flat plate. So we'll try to understand what it is. Let's say this is a the flat plate. Okay, you can see this is the flat plate. This is the flow, the parallel flow. So uh, it means it is in the same directions. This flow is going this way, and this is the plate They're in the same directions. The flow velocity uh, is V and T infinity is the temperature. So this is given. At this point, let's say uh, the length of the plate, it is zero. And the total length, you can see this is an L. So we can say it is X equal L. So definitely at this point, it should be some sort of uh, distance. We don't know. So we said this is actually X CR. We'll say critical distance. Why critical distance? Uh, from this picture, we can see the flow to this, it is laminar, and from here to here, uh, the flow becomes turbulent. So we know uh, for the fluid flow, uh, it is um, kind of like this. The initial it is laminar, then the transition steps, then the flow becomes turbulent. So that would we know from the theories. Anyways, so here what is happening, you look, uh, Initially at x equal zero, this is the leading is, and this is the trailing is of this plate. So the flow is laminar here. After this, at this point, it becomes turbulent. So how we can say this turbulent? There is some benchmark um, calculations. We know uh, for um, by using the Reynolds number, we can say whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. And previously. But the internal flow, if you can remember, internal flow means the pipe flow. So for internal flow, when the flow is just going inside the pipe, this value is less than 2300. So I'm repeating again, this is for internal flow. That means flow inside the pipe. If the Reynolds number was 2300, then we say it is laminar. But from the turbulent uh, in the, for the external flow, external means flow is just flowing in, outside the objects. So here it is over the flat plate. So we'll use the same formula, the Reynolds number formula. Here you see rho Vx or mu. Rho is the density and mu is the dynamic viscosity. Or it could be like, you can use the dynamic viscosity. It, it will depend. In the question, if the dynamic viscosity is given, you use the first formula. And this is called the Greek word mu. It is, it is the kinematic viscosity, okay? It is the kinematic viscosity. Actually, this kinematic viscosity is equal dynamic viscosity over density. So this is the same thing. So whatever information you have, you will um, actually use that. And based on that information, you will decide whether you are going to use this or this. Anyways, for external flow, when you will calculate it from the benchmark experiment, we got the critical Reynolds number is five into 10 to the power five. What it means? It means at this point, the Reynolds number will be five and 10 to the power five. So if it is five into 10 to the power five or greater than that, the flow will be turbulent. And if it is less than five into 10 to the power five, then flow will be laminar. So um, when you will get a question in the exam, you need to calculate the Reynolds number at first. This is the first task. You will calculate the Reynolds number and decide whether flow is laminar or turbulent. And based on that, then you will calculate the heat transfer or heat transfer coefficient or you know, whatever uh, is requested in the, in the question. So I'll move to the next uh, phase. We can calculate the local Reynolds number or, you know, say, so I said, let's say this is x equal zero, it is x equal L. Let's say it is five meter long pipe. So here, suppose it is one meter, let's say it is four meter, and this is the five meter. If I say, okay, you calculate the missile number at x equal four meter distance. So for this case, here is the formula. For laminar flow, it is the formula. For turbulent flow, it is the formula. So if you ask me how we got this, this is a big experiment um, and the correlations evolved, we developed and it's validated. So we're not going to uh, discuss how they developed it, but it is already uh, actually here. So we are going to use it. So for laminar flow, this turbulent flow, this. I mentioned earlier, you will initially calculate the Reynolds number. If it is less than five and 10 to the power five, then flow is laminar. If it is greater than, then turbulent. 
So just one thing you look here, guys. This curve, um, you see it is the it's showing the, the laminar flow transition and turbulent. So this curve, it is actually showing the trend of the convection heat transfer coefficient or the friction power. So for laminar flow, the this two values, it will be actually initially you know, the high and then it will decrease. When the transition will start, it will raise the the you know the minimum value. So it will experience a drop. And once the transition will start, it will increase. And then when the flow will be fully developed, the, the turbulent, then it will decrease again. So we'll, we'll discuss a chart later on. And then uh, we'll see a similar trend for different um, you know, flow conditions. So here, it is for if you need to calculate the local heat transfer coefficient or local muscle number. But for a system, when uh, we have uh, you know, a flat plate, if we want to analyze the total rate of heat transfer for this whole plate, then uh, it could be you know, the different um, values throughout the plates. So if you want to get the accurate uh, predictions, then you need to use the average value. So we are going to calculate the average decimal number. So here, for the average decimal number, this is the formula. This is the first one for laminar, the second one for turbulent. And this is the corresponding initial condition. So you must need to satisfy this, okay? Now, if you have a question in the exam where you have both the laminar and the turbulent sections, that means you have a problem, you have a flat plate, it's not long enough, and you cannot actually ignore the laminar flow behavior. And then you need to consider both the laminar and turbulent. And then in that case, we, here is the you know the, the, the final term of the Nussle number, like how you can calculate the Nussle number for flow that exists both laminar and turbulent conditions. So, and then, so this is the first part of this video and uh, I'll just stop here and we'll make another one where we'll discuss some other aspects uh, for plant plates.